Welcome back to the channel. This week, the photo group and I went to Zamora. So what is Zamora? Zamora is known as the land of birds and waterfalls, rightly so. Um, beautiful place to go. So if you get a chance, definitely worth a visit. On the way to Zamora, the morning sky was just amazing. It, we had to stop and take some pictures along the way because the, the clouds had settled into the valley and we were above the clouds and it's just a really, really beautiful sight to, to see the mountains poking through the tops of the clouds. But a little bit about Zamora history. It is a jewel nestled in the mountains of southeastern Ecuador, a testament to resilience natural beauty, and cultural heritage. This corner of the country, known for its lush vegetation and rich heritage, has evolved over the centuries to become a place that deserves to be explored and admired. Zamora's origins go back to pre-Columbian times, when the region was inhabited by various indigenous cultures. The Shuhar and Achuar groups were some of the first inhabitants of these lands, and their legacy still persists today. These brave indigenous people lived in harmony with the Amazon jungle and develop a deep knowledge of local flora and fauna. The Shuhar, also known as Jiparos in the past, were known for their fierce warrior spirit. Hunting and war skills, their way of life was intrinsically linked to the Amazon jungle from which they obtained vital resources for their survival. The Shuhar culture has significantly influenced Zamora's identity. Zamora's history took a significant turn with the arrival of the Spanish colonizers in the 16th century. In 1549, the Spanish explored the region, establishing contact with the indigenous. However, the official foundation of Zamora took place in 1549 with construction of the chapel under the patronage of Santa Ana. The influence of the Catholic religion in Zamora was profound and lasting. The chapel built in honor of Santa Ana marked the beginning of the religious presence in the region. Over the years, churches were built and religious festivals were celebrated that became an integral part of Zamorana culture. Today, Zamora is a city in constant evolution that has managed to balance its urban growth with the conservation of its natural environment. The city is a starting point to explore the impressive beauty and Ecuadorian Amazon, and its economy is based on agriculture, livestock, and ecological tourism. The natural wealth that surrounds Zamora makes it a privileged destination for ecotourism. Visitors can explore nature reserves, hike in the jungle, observe exotic birds, and immerse themselves in Amazon biodiversity. Zamora is a starting point for exciting adventure in this region. In summary, the history of Zamora is a fascinating journey that spans centuries of evolution, from its indigenous roots to its role as a gateway to the Ecuadorian Amazon jungle today. Located in nature, this city offers a unique experience that combines history, culture, and biodiversity. Zamora is located in the Orient region at the base of the Andes Mountains in Ecuador at 970 meters or 3,182 feet above sea level. The name Zamora comes from the Spanish city of Zamora in homage to the land of origin from some of the colonizers who arrived in the region in the 16th century. One of the most important festivities in Zamora is the Feast of the Virgin of Guadalupe, which is celebrated in December. During this holiday, parades, dances, and religious events are held. In recent years, the city has experienced an increase in population due to the discovery of gold in surrounding areas. The town itself was originally founded by the Spanish, but after being attacked by indigenous Indians, 
it was reclaimed by local people. The town is somewhat a Spanish feel, complete with central plaza and botanical gardens. Zamora has a lot to offer bumping up against the Podocarpus National Park. Of course, there are hiking trails, birds, rivers, waterfalls, and of course, a very lush jungle scenery. From Vilca, we had to wind through Loja just a little bit, then make a turn towards Zamora. The drive was a bit long, but about two and a half hours. Beautiful, lush, green, and there are quite a few waterfalls along the winding road. So don't drive too fast, or you'll miss the waterfalls. If you go to Zamora, there are a few places you might want to stop and visit. The giant clock. The main control of the clock is electric with a minute hand stretching 15 meters long. This important work was built in 2004 with local engineering professionals participating in its construction. The other place I wish we would have planned a little bit further ahead to go, if you go to Zamora, definitely get a reservation and go to Copalinga. To go there, you have to have a reservation. They just don't, they don't open up unless there's people with reservations. Um, this promises to have beautiful birds. And I think if you go and you stay, you will be able to wake up with the birds, see them at the perfect time during the day, and get some great pictures. I hear the birds are really colorful in this area. Copalinga provides access to one of the Earth's richest areas of biodiversity. It is on the eastern slope of the Ecuadorian Andes. The reserve is adjacent to the Podocarpus National Park, where the altitude ranges greatly and supports a variety of di different ecosystems, contributing to the incredible number of plant and animal species found there. It is estimated that over 1,000 plant species are endemic to the the region, and mammals such as fox, deer, puma, mountain tapirs, and speckled bears are also known to occur. But of course, if you go, you're right there next to Podocarpus, so of course, always visit Podocarpus National Park. There are various entrances to Podocarpus throughout Ecuador, but each one has its own set of hiking trails and unique beauty to take in. So enjoy the rest of the video. The waterfalls are beautiful. They say the best time to visit um, Zamora may be in the dry season. I'm not sure you would be able to see as spectacular of waterfalls. Because I know we went on one day and it was um, had just been raining. There was quite a bit of water in the falls. Then we went about a week later. Less rain, less waterfalls. So. Plan your trip accordingly. If you're going for the waterfalls, you might want to put your rain gear together and go during the rainy season. But if you want to go and just check out the park and the birds and that type of wildlife, you might want to go when it's more in the dry season, maybe towards the end of the rainy season, so you get a little bit of both. Either way, enjoy Zamora.